So Tales of the Jedi, episode five. It's a quickie. Uh, it was under 10 minutes long. Um, I was actually kind of surprised looking at the clock going, is, is that it? Um, and then I realized it was it. But it is a poignant episode, nevertheless, because this is all about Ahsoka Tano. And there's a little bit of Anakin in here as well, but it's really mostly about her. And a, specifically a sort of moment in time that she carries with her for the rest of her life and prepares her for things to come. Um, before we get into it, you know, spoiler alert stuff, because I don't do spoiler free. And I know I'm a little bit behind the times, but there might still be some people out there who haven't watched this yet. So if you haven't, go watch it first before we come back to this. But let me dig into my show notes here. And for those of you who are um, watching the show or who have watched the show, this is episode five called Practice Makes Perfect. And we start off with um, this sequence where we enter a room and we've got Ahsoka Tano practicing with the training bots. Um, and Anakin shows up late, as always. And Obi-Wan and Mace Windu are watching on. Um, he seems disinterested by the whole proceedings here. Like he's only here because he's been asked to be here or because he has an obligation to be here. And it's it's still a fun sequence because there's a new training pro protocol that gets, in, that gets introduced designed to simulate battle droids. And Ahsoka kicks its ass like she's this is no problem to her. And while Obi-Wan is impressed, Anakin continues to remain ambivalent. And it's just like, meh. And I was wondering... If it was something to do with her, and she thinks it's something to do with her as well, because as they're on the way out, she's obviously crushed by his disinterest in the fact that she just, you know, took apart those bots. And she's like, what the hell, man? And he takes her to the side <clears throat> in front of this window, and he's like, look, it's a lousy test. And he doesn't want the rest of, you know, he doesn't want anybody hearing any of the pad ones or any of the giant, but he's like, it's a lousy test. And this is when she realizes that he's not mad at her. <clears throat> it's just that he's upset with the system. And in his point of view, the system, he's like, the tests, these tests, they're for everybody. The normal Jedi. I'm not normal. You're my Padawan. You're not normal. So if you really want to learn, we have to do something that's truly challenging and completely off the book. And she's like, yeah, let's do it. Um, so he's like, all right, let's do a real test. And they go off. And of course, Obi-Wan and Yoda are kind of watching from the shadows and like, nah, letting it go ahead. And the next shot, we find that um, she's arriving on a planet where Anakin has Rex and a whole squadron of troopers ready to administer her test, whatever that might be. And we come to find out that this is essentially um, her getting stunned by a whole group of these clones over and over and over again. And obviously their blasters aren't stunned. They're not going to kill or anything. Um, but Anakin's telling her, in, in order to do this, you have to be prepared for anything. You need to be able to sense their intentions so that you'll know before they even pull the trigger. And she makes it a couple, you know, stun rotations in before she's knocked unconscious. And then she's waking up. She's been out for an hour. And he's like, you'll get used to it. And she's like, Ugh. shakes it off, goes again, gets tagged again over and 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 over. And Anakin has no mercy. And she finally gets frustrated. She's like, the droids aren't half as good as Rex has been. This isn't fair. And he's like, that's the point. This is about life and death. I have to teach you how to protect yourself. Because if you can handle Rex and his men, then you can handle anything out there with a blaster. And I know you can do this. So let's focus. And this is when she gets determined. Like the music cranks up the tension cranks up you know she's gonna kick ass this time through and she's there bam boom shazam and she still gets knocked out but rex wakes her up and he's like good job you know it took you five minutes that time um and they do it again and now she's whoosh, double lightsabers and this is when you know things are like getting serious and just some really amazing animation here as she goes through these sequences and flips around in the air and deflects and all this other stuff, but she still gets knocked down. Um, and again, and Anakin's, Anakin's looking on in pride, and they do it, and all of this is going on. She gets knocked out again, and then it fades to black, and she's waking up in the present, or in the future, I should say. And it's her and Rex in the field, and he's taking her in to face all these clones after this is essentially i think this is from the end of the clone wars when she it's right after order 66 and he's had his chip removed and she's got to face the the clones so you know getting a flash forward then of her in a present day and rex is like hopefully all that training 
pays off as they go into this room. So again, really short and and sweet episode. I felt it was, like I said, poignant because it is another glimpse through the eyes of Ahsoka Tano, um, who is probably one of everybody's favorite characters from the overall Star Wars universe. And it was really rewarding for me to see her character get official canon status when everything carried over to Disney. Um, but also, um, you know, watching like things like Admiral Thrawn um, get canon status and, um, you know, it's uh, obviously there's more characters I would love to see from the extended universe or legacy. What well, I don't even know what they're calling it these days, but um, there are truly some amazing characters that have showed up in all the novels and all the shows over the years. And, uh, and obviously this is one of the ones that is stuck throughout because it was created by George Lucas, you know, way back when he was still overseeing all the Clone Wars production. And Dave Filoni has done a very good job of helping to co-create that character and guide that character through all the various iterations. I know I'm excited every time I see her character on screen because I know I'm going to be getting a super interesting episode. I mean, even the, the, the start of this show, the first episode of Tales of the Jedi, was Ahsoka Tano as a baby and already... You know, like the village elder realizing that there's something special about this child. And, and as they went through that sequence of her getting captured by the animal and the predator and getting drug off to the cave. And then she conquers it with the force. And, you know, they make it back to the village. And the old lady's like, Jedi, she will be, you know. And that starts Ahsoka Tano's adventure. And there's so much that, I mean, I, I feel like, yeah, they told a lot of the story in the Clone Wars of her going from being, you know, a baby Padawan all the way up. Um, and then getting into Rebels and her story arc there. And now, of course, we're getting the Ahsoka Tana show. So for me, I'm always going to be happy when I see this character on screen. And I think this is another really good example of um, great storytelling in action. And as always, I have nothing but praise for the talented animators who are working on the show. Because if you haven't s sat down and like analyzed this from scene to scene, all the episodes that we've seen so far... I've been saying the same thing about the season two of the Bad Batch. It's the same animation team. Um, the fact that they're blending so many different types of animation styles with mocap and stuff, and then you've got sequences here where the animation of the fight scenes is so action-packed and so well done. It takes you back to... Sorry, my nose just did like a trumpet sound. Um... I'm 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 remembering back to like the lightsaber fight scenes in the prequel trilogy, which were the best we've ever seen on film before. I, again, all Star Wars is good. Star Wars, some Star Wars is better than other Star Wars. I don't I don't have I don't permit there to be bad Star Wars in my point of view. Um, but I will say I don't appreciate the lightsaber fight sequences in the new trilogy from Disney in comparison to uh, the prequel lightsaber sequences which were amazingly choreographed um and then also seeing the one that they did at the end of uh obi-wan kenobi against obi-wan and darth vader which was like the best thing i've seen on screen ever in terms of lightsaber fight sequences um this is a close like second in terms of watching those lightsaber fights play out compared to what we see on screen in tales of the jedi and things like clone wars um I really loved the sequence when she's finally starting to get the grit and determination and she pulls out the double lightsabers. And there's, I mean, the animation team is doing a really good job to put that kind of stuff together because I'm on the seat of my pants the whole time, like a kid, just like, oh yeah, that's awesome. Look at the way she moved out. Oh, quick rewind. Check that flip out again. Cool stuff. Anyway, if you like this and you're liking the show, don't forget to let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, support if you can. Super chats, memberships, there's a Patreon page, Discord links are all down there. May the force be with you. See you next time, folks.